Uh, and I'm going to steal from John Farrell. Why aren't the Chinese coming to Washington? So a couple of practical things there. There had been a ban on tour groups, the big tour groups uh, leaving China. That was in place, I think, until recently. And also, of course, airline availability. The, the capacity hasn't been laid on for those routes out of China. So that means costs have been very expensive. I, mean, I don't then mean guys in. coming in here to buy Gucci in New York. And uh, I mean like Chinese officials, like Secretary well, Raimondo. Are they welcome in Washington? Well, there was one senior Chinese official did come here before the Blinken visit, if you remember. So there has been one. But yes, it does look like it's more of a conga line of US officials going in that direction rather than the other way around. I think that's why it will be interesting to see if A, we do start to see secretary level Chinese officials come here over the coming months, but then B, just project forward to the apex summit that the US will host on its own turf in November. President Xi, of course, will be at that. And that will be very interesting to see what kind of exchange President Xi will allow with President Biden on US soil. And did you get the sense that President Xi cares about the state of the economy and financial markets when he makes these kind of trips? Is that important to him? Does he want to make those kind of trips with a strong economy and a buoyant equity market behind him? I think, of course, it's, it's paramount to the whole raison d'etre of the Communist Party. They want a strong economy. They do want a strong jobs market. They want strong foreign investment. But obviously, they want it on their terms. I mean, we saw last week President Xi in the world stage pushing for and getting expansion of the BRICS bloc. Now, we can talk about that all day long. But the bottom line is it's pulled together some of the world's biggest emerging economies, broadly speaking, under, under China's influence. Now, whether or not the Chinese authorities are especially concerned about the go-go levels in, in the stock markets, I think that's probably more of an open question. But they do want a strong economy, and I think that's why we are seeing that tone change now on. Uh, they're talking about doing more to attract foreign investment. But, Enda, things like cutting the stamp tax, limiting IPOs, in theory, that is targeted at financial markets. And then, to your point, that isn't the only drip drip of information we've gotten from China or easing we've gotten from China. Now we have the news on potentially a cut to existing uh, mortgage rates, deposit rate cut potentially coming from state-owned banks. It just seems like one thing after another. How much further can it go? Yeah, look, a stock market rally doesn't necessarily reflect what's going on in the real economy. There is a big disconnect in China. But there's no doubt that what, what you really need to look at is what's happening in the real estate sector. That's the core of what's happening in China's slowdown there. That's why we are seeing, as you mentioned, they're bringing down borrowing rates, they're talking about um, cutting stamp duty, taking other measures to promote home, uh, home buying, home selling, that kind of thing. So that's, the, that's like the ground zero of what's happening in China's economy. But you look at other parts of it, by the way, it's not as bad as you might think. Take a look at what's happening in iron ore prices. <coughs> iron ore exporters and manufacturers are saying demand to China is holding up much better than expected. So that's that's why there's this open question, I think, going around about China this year. Are we looking at the annual China crisis, or is this something different? If it were something different, though, what, what realistically is it that we're looking at? I think the difference this time is the, as John just asked about there, it's the political backdrop. You know, what is the priority of the government? I mean, there's a benign interpretation that they're pursuing tough medicine for China's economy. They do not want to go down the road of debt again, given debt, debt levels are already so high for local governments in particular. They know they need to straighten out the real estate sector. These are things, by the way, the international community have called on for years. So that's a, a benign interpretation, tough love. Of course, then there's a political interpre interpretation, which is that the authorities aren't really that focused focused on, we right. say, juicing growth anymore. anymore. Their priority is ideology. Uh, and uh, with great respect for your service through the pandemic, Chengdu, 15 million people. Chongqing, I'm butchering these pronouncers, uh, people, I'm sorry, 12 million. Wuhan of the pandemic, 9 million. Shenyang, 7 million. We never talk about these cities. Are they flat on their back? Well, the real estate side of things is pretty flat on their back in, in, in a lot of these cities, Tom. I mean, we've been reporting that housing demand is weak, house prices are falling, house sales are weak, housing developments are going unfinished. Uh, we know in the credit market some of those big developers are either asking for grace periods to repay their loans or they're seeing their bonds in secondary trade fall through the floor. So all of that ripples down to what's going on in the real estate sector of these of these provincial cities that you're speaking about. And then beyond that, we know there's a spillover on consumers. But what I'm saying to you is some parts of the economy aren't in the doldrums as the way the popular narrative might suggest. And I'm seeing some analysts make the point that take a look at what's going on in iron ore. It does show there's activity happening, especially on the infrastructure side of things. Chris Rohn said exactly the same thing in the last couple of hours. And let's finish here just briefly. You know this stuff inside out far better than I do. What are you focused on now? What are you anticipating is going to be the next move, given the moves we've already seen over the last couple of weeks? 
Just keep an eye on what does happen with these property developers. I mean, we've seen this before. The, the plot spoiler might be that there won't be an, a kind of a Lehman style moment. There'll be some kind of a bailout and uh, everything will shuffle along. Just see what kind of tonic they do take to the real estate sector, how they navigate this, this kind of a hard landing that's going on at the moment, or do they step back and put their hands up and really come to the rescue with the kind of flood of liquidity that we kind of got used to in, in China cycles past. All about the real estate sector and how the officials respond, John.